Hi, uh, in this video, I thought I would talk about a common limitation that I see among uh, many students. And specifically, students will often get uh, really all the information about a subject matter from a single source, be it a textbook, uh, their lecture notes, etc. So when they encounter a concept that they don't understand, uh, there's usually little they can do aside from uh, asking a teacher or a friend. And by the way, I think it's good to ask teachers and friends if you don't understand something. Specifically, ask good friends. Don't ask friends who don't know the material. But uh, you should feel free to ask people you know uh, who might be familiar with the material about whether you can get help in a particular area. Uh, but aside from that, there are many, many online resources that one can consult. And I thought I would talk a bit about uh, that. So there's uh, Khan Academy. And, and Khan Academy has tons of videos. Uh, they were primarily done by uh, Sal Khan, and, and uh, he covers topics such as certainly all the STEM subjects like science, engineering, mathematics, but he also covers areas like economics and, uh, and uh, uh, finance, history, etc. So definitely worth recommending, uh, definitely worth checking that out if you haven't already done so. I am a bit biased here since I know Sal uh, for many years and I've had a chance to see Khan Academy uh, literally grow from its infancy to the point where uh, it's educating many millions of people each month. I think I remember it when it was uh, him educating literally just one or two people with it, and now it's uh, got an amazing outreach. Uh, MIT also has something called Open Courseware, and Open Courseware contains archives of lectures and lecture notes. You, you can find uh, uh, all sorts of course material from MIT courses uh, on Open Courseware. So look for the course material there. I'm a big user of, M of MIT's Open Courseware in the past. Um, it is certainly uh, a bit more advanced uh, compared to, let's say, if you're a high school student, but that shouldn't stop you, and I'll, I'll let you talk about that a bit later in this video. Um, Coursera is another offering that's actually gotten a lot of traction recently because they just announced a bunch of funding, but basically Coursera is uh, a site where you can get university-level courses that, that have been adapted for an online fashion, uh, and, and this effort has been spearheaded by uh, some faculty from Stanford uh, but it also does include a number of other schools, and so definitely check out Coursera. Uh, Udacity, and I think Udacity is kind of similar to Coursera in that they're both kind of focusing on uh, university uh, affiliations. And so, and Udacity was also founded actually by somebody who was tenured at Stanford. He left Stanford to to start Udacity, and again, it's taught by university professors, uh, and you can find uh, a lot of great material on on them. Uh, Udemy is another site where you can actually see courses that anyone's created. You can even offer your own course. Uh, in fact, if you want to learn something well, I often believe that the, the best way to do it is to teach it. Uh, so uh, you can create your own course at Udemy, but you can see courses that others have created. Uh, definitely worth checking out. You're going to get a bit more of a mixed bag in terms of the type of content that's covered because uh, it's not limited just to university professors or uh, current academics, but anybody can create a course on Udemy. Uh, but still worth checking out. There's also somebody uh, named Patrick JMT. Uh, he actually does math videos. It's actually kind of similar to Khan Academy, except uh, uh, the focus is purely math, and he purely does videos, uh, and uh, uh, doesn't cover as much as much in terms of subjects. Oh, and by the way, one thing I do want to mention about Khan Academy is that they do have uh, great problems as well. So you can also use their uh, their problem framework. In fact, a lot of their focus right now is on uh, the problem framework backend. So. It's a great way to not only just learn material, uh, but you can also find uh, sample problems in math, especially, and, and uh, you can try to answer the problems, you can get hints, and if you get them right, it'll tell you. If you get it wrong, it'll tell you, it'll give you hints, and you can figure out and really kind of gauge and monitor your progress with Khan Academy. So their whole backend is pretty phenomenal as well. Okay, and in general, I mean, you should just uh, use other sources. So for example, uh, many universities put their course materials online where you can access past problem sets, solution sets, exams, not just MIT, but I think Berkeley does it, Stanford does it. Uh, in general, just use Google to find information of this sort. You can also enter and search terms into YouTube, for example. You'll often find videos on specific topics. Uh, and then some of these sites, many of these sites actually also have user forums, so keep that in mind. Uh, user forums give you an opportunity to, to ask questions of other people and get back responses. There are specific websites that are focused purely on user forums. There's certainly Math Overflow, Stack Overflow. Uh, there's also a site that I like. It's called uh, Quora. And Quora is much more focused on just uh, question and answers. So Q-U-O-R-A. I'm going to write that again maybe because it's kind of hard to read my handwriting. But Q-U-O-R-A. 
Quora. So check them out as well. They're kind of a purely question and answer based site, but you can get a lot of good information on areas that might be uh, tripping you up in, in terms of your courses. Okay, and of course, there's a lot of content available on the internet, so be a bit careful because there's uh, not all that content is necessarily good content. I think on the one hand, the fact that anyone can easily create content means that there is just a wealth of it available, which is an amazing thing. Uh, on the other hand, a lot of that content might turn out to be poor. It may not be written by somebody or expressed by somebody who understands the material well. So if in doubt, try to stick to some of the more well-known sources that I've described above. And at the very least, uh, don't take everything you hear or, or see at face value. Try to figure out whether or not the material in question is good material. Uh, the other thing I would strongly recommend is using more advanced sources. And don't be afraid to use more advanced sources. Um, people, you know, you know, people might have trouble, for example, understanding stuff that they, they read from a more advanced source. They're not going to understand even on, you know, they may not even understand 50% of that material. And even though you might have trouble understanding the material described in a more advanced source, sometimes that material can impart a few ideas that'll help you. And by more advanced source, I mean, for example, if you're taking an introductory course in a particular topic, look for the advanced version of that course. You may be able to find graduate material, future lecture notes, things of that sort. I also find that more advanced sources will allow you to see how particular concepts can be applied in the future. And oftentimes we're introduced to concepts early on because maybe they're easy to understand early on, but you don't really get to appreciate the full value of those concepts until much later. And it's only down the line where you get to really see how important those concepts might be in a field. And by exposing yourself earlier on to that material that's more advanced, you'll get to see that, that bigger picture, so to speak. And of course, you know, again, people are scared of using more advanced material and more advanced sources for fear that they won't understand 100% of the material. And, and you're right. I mean, you're, you're unlikely to understand all the material. In fact, you may not even understand half the material. But that shouldn't stop you from trying anyway. And in fact, I believe that trying to navigate these types of murky situations is an important lifelong learning skill. And for example, if you're, if you're ever in graduate school or you're working towards a doctoral thesis, or actually just about in any field, you're going to find this. A big part of what you're often doing uh, later on in life is navigating situations or in which there is a lot of unknown territory where neither you or nor anybody else for that matter in the world understands what's going on 100%. So that ability to be able to navigate murky situations is very powerful and the more practice you can get in doing that the better. You know I definitely benefited myself from using advanced sources and I'll give you one example of that where I've done it. Uh, when I was taking an introductory computer science class, we were introduced to something called Big O notation, which is how you would describe uh, what's known as the asymptotic running time of an algorithm. It kind of helps you reason about how efficient an algorithm, an algorithm is. And I actually started to read more about Big O notation in a more advanced textbook. And, and that particular book was the Corman Lyserson Rivest uh, Introduction to Algorithms book, uh, which is sometimes called CLR. It's a really popular textbook, and in fact, it's been used. It's actually currently used as a textbook for a junior, senior level undergraduate course at MIT on algorithms. Uh, there's actually a newer edition available now by uh, in which Cliff Stoll has been added as an author. Um, and so it's uh, called CLRS. Uh, but uh, the reality is that uh, it, it's a very popular textbook used in a lot of classes. Uh, and to be honest, um, the CLR book, when I was first reading it, was definitely beyond me at the time. It wasn't something I could fully understand. But it did impart uh, some additional techniques for analyzing asymptotic running time, and it actually gave me a better understanding of why you needed to consider asymptotic running time rather than simply measuring an algorithm's performance on a particular computer. And, and also, by having been exposed to that book early on, when I actually took the algorithms course later on in life, uh, a couple years later, I had this amazing foundation that I could rely upon because I'd already been exposed to some of that material. And so not only did I do very well in the course, I was actually allowed to TA that course a year later. And it's, it's, I think it's largely because I was able to start thinking about that material early on. Even though I didn't understand it as well earlier on, I was able to start building some understanding that I could then later leverage or build upon uh, subsequently. And of course, if a particular topic interests you, uh, you can always ask your teacher whether or not there are sources for more information. I think uh, your teacher is going to be a very valuable resource here. Uh, in this regard. So always feel free to ask your teacher. I, I find that um, you know, teachers 
if they know you're interested in a particular area, they're usually willing to, to give you more advice on where to look next. I'm sure they'll be glad to tell you. In fact, that's how I first learned about the CLR book. I was One of my teachers told me about it. Uh, you can also look at what different schools do. You know, do they offer textbooks for their classes, for follow-on classes on the topic to get this information? Students who are older may be able to provide you with interesting advice on future sources to use and, and so on and so forth. Uh, the one last point I do want to make is that ideally, if you do want to leverage additional sources, it's helpful to figure out what to focus on. And one way to go is to focus on material where your understanding is weak. Um, there are a few ways in which you can determine that. For example, uh, try to see if you're able to teach that idea to somebody else. And I did talk about this in the context of the active learning video, but I thought I would reiterate it because it's such an important concept. Um, you know, try to explain ideas to somebody else, even if it's an imaginary student, just pretend you're explaining it to somebody else. And try to explain things in relatively simple terms. If you can't explain something in simpler terms, then there's a good chance that your understanding is not there yet. Uh, in addition to that, try to do problems. If you're in a math class or computer science class, the best way to see if you understand something is to try problems. And see if, there, um, see if you're able to you know, at least make sense out of the problems and get the right answers. If not, you know, maybe again, your understanding is not quite there yet. Though I, I think you should be a bit careful here because sometimes what will happen is that you may understand the material but still struggle on a problem because it requires a particular creative leap or creative twist in order to solve it. Uh, but at least you know, see if you can understand the problem, see if you can start to think about how to solve it. It's a good way to see if your understanding is, is where it needs to be. Uh, so you know, to summarize, I, this particular video I talked about, you know, first of all, not limiting your learning to just a narrow set of sources. You should seek out additional sources, especially for areas that don't make sense to you. And um, you know, again, in this day and age with the internet, there's so many good sources available. I talked about all these sources up here, and they're fantastic. You should definitely try to leverage them uh, to your heart's content. They're freely available for the most part. Uh, and seek out additional sources for areas that don't make sense to you. Uh, second, you should consider using more advanced sources, even if you can't understand them 100%. Uh, and there are great ways to kind of build your foundation. And then finally, uh, there are a number of good ways to determine what to focus on when it comes to seeking out additional sources. Try to teach the material to somebody else, even an imaginary person, and, and do problems if, they're, if it's relevant to that field. Like, for example, if it's math or computer science or physics or some related field, you can do sample problems. It's a great way to figure out what you don't know. Anyway, I hope that was useful, and I look forward to seeing you in future videos.